A major mix-up at a Moorhead school. A whistleblower alerted us that a student at Horizon Middle School was given the wrong medication. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer joins us now with the details. Melanie? Andrea, Mike, we first found out about this when a whistleblower brought a Facebook post to our attention. The post is from a woman who says her son came home from school and told her he was given a blue pill and told to take the medicine. It goes on to say the boy felt funny after taking it. This mom claims the school later told her it was Adderall that was given to her child. We wanted to know how this happened, so we went right to the spokesperson of Moorhead Public Schools. In a statement, they confirmed with us that an incident did happen this week where a student was given the wrong medication. However, they did not confirm what kind. The district tells us the student did not suffer any negative effects related to the medication. And for those of you who don't know, Adderall is a prescription stimulant used to treat ADHD. Now, the district's medication policy says administration of prescription medication by school personnel must be done according to the written order of a licensed prescriber and the written authorization of a parent or guardian. We asked the spokesperson with Moorhead Schools if the school nurse or administrator involved will be facing any kind of disciplinary action but have not gotten an answer to our question. Now this post claims the mix-up happened because the student had the same name as someone else who is prescribed to take the medication. Mike? All right, thanks Melanie. We did reach also out to the mother who put the post up. We have not heard back. Moorhead Public School officials tell us the district is reviewing its protocols to make sure it doesn't happen again. If you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Phone number's on your screen, 701-237-6576. Call that number and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. If you haven't noticed, temps are starting to take on that heading into fall feel. From what I understand, we'll really notice it tomorrow. Let's try to enjoy what we have tonight. Hutch is here with your no-weight weather planner. Hutch? Yeah, you could say temperatures have been less than par lately as we look in at the Dakota Winds Golf Course out there at the Dakota Magic Casino. A beautiful day to get in some golf or cheer on the home team as we take a look at the weather across the valley. We are high and dry here. Some showers and thunder showers pushing through central South Dakota. 60s in northern Minnesota, 70s elsewhere, and in Mobridge, it's 80, with winds that have been brisk, gusting to around 20 miles per hour, mainly in the southern half of our viewing area. This evening, temperatures slowly falling through the 60s. The clouds will build during the overnight hours, and for some, there will be a chance of rain to begin the weekend, and it could last for much of the day. I'll have details in our by hour style of your uh, kickoff to the weekend forecast here in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. Make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so that uh, you'll get the latest forecasts and conditions. All you have to do is search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. A new sentencing date has been set for a man convicted of helping to cover up this death of Savannah Gray Wind. The North Dakota Supreme Court ruled last month that William Haynes should not have been sentenced to life in prison because a judge mistakenly classified him as a dangerous special offender. Hain pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit kidnapping in the attack on Graywin, whose baby survived. Hain's girlfriend, Brooke Cruz, admitted she sliced Graywin's baby from her womb and was sentenced to life without parole. Family and friends gathered outside Holy Cross Catholic Church in Fargo this afternoon to pay their last respects for Brenda Cardis. The 32-year-old's remains were found near the river in South Fargo on August 22nd, just over a year after Brenda had disappeared. Police continue to investigate her death as a homicide, adding they have multiple persons of interest. People walking into the funeral today told us they hope justice comes soon. They said today was a day to celebrate the good person Brenda was. Police say they've launched an investigation into a bizarre Wednesday night incident in Grand Forks. We first told you about it last night after a mom said a man approached her teenage daughter and her friends at Cox Park holding a knife and offering the teens drugs. The woman said none of the teens snapped pictures or could give an exact description of the man and she said she did not report the incident to police, saying once she got to the park, the man was already gone. Grand Forks police say it was a social media that sparked them to look into it. We'll continue to follow this, follow this developing story. It's Friday and time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Authorities are looking for Charles Lambert III, who's wanted for failing to register as a sex offender. If you know where he is, you can call 780-8280.
A 29-year-old man is in jail after refusing to stop for West Fargo police and leading them on a brief chase. It happened around 1.30 this morning when police tried to stop the car in the 1300 block of 13th Avenue East. That's when officers say the car took off over city lines into Fargo. The driver eventually losing control of the car and crashing into a light pole. 29-year-old Felix Wallet III ran from the scene but was caught later and arrested. An update to a story we told you about yesterday. Authorities have arrested a man who ran from law enforcement. They say Quentin, or after Quentin Miller's car got stuck in a pasture, he caught a ride into Jamestown and was later arrested at a hotel. He was wanted for reckless driving, drug charges, and fleeing an officer. We first told you back in January about a Stutzman County man facing felony sex charges stemming from multiple incidents between 1997 and 2001. 56-year-old Jerome Greenshields was charged with sexual assault, gross sexual imposition. But his case was dismissed, not once, but twice. Now the North Dakota Supreme Court has reversed and remanded those dismissals, saying they disagree with both Stutzman County judges and reopened Greenshields' case. Minnesota now joins other states in the tragic trend of having patients die from vaping-related illnesses. State health officials say the 65-year-old passed away after a long and complicated hospitalization, and their lung injury was associated with vaping illicit THC products. So far, Minnesota has 17 other confirmed or probable cases of patients with the same illness and another 15 cases under investigation. Stick around. Coming up later on Valley News Live at 6, we're going to catch up with a parade that's underway right now in Moorhead. Great weather for a parade tonight. Your temperature reaching 74 degrees, just shy of what's typical on this day. 75 in Grand Forks today. We have some hitches in the proverbial giddy-up for your weekend forecast. I'll have the very latest next.